three days later. Friday night, September 30th. In the days following my latest spat with Sarah, life passed by in a surprisingly peaceful manner. With only a single day of work for the week, and Sarah having caught onto my change in profession, I had no reason to leave the house, let alone feign going to work. My presence at home was at an all-time high, and money problems had become a thing of the past, leaving Sarah with very little to worry about. And of course, if she's happy, I'm happy. The only downside to my new lifestyle is the mind-numbing boredom. Working only one day a week may be restful, but it's bad for the sanity. I've been exercising to a ridiculous degree as a result, but that doesn't stave off the boredom for long. Right now, I'd much rather be down here, where things are at least interesting. Not that I was worried of course, I had the guy right where I wanted him. So I said to him, which do you think is faster, a police car or my knife? By the time I'd sliced off half his face, the guy was pissing himself. You should have seen the look on his demented face. Or at least, they were interesting until Leo started monologuing. As I pondered my own situation, Leo continued to prattle on, as he had from the moment Sai asked for his report. Professional or not, Leon's uh, hubris, or hubri, I don't know, seemed to be getting all, uh, in the way of his rapport, not to mention our meeting. Uh, that's enough. Sit down and shut up. Vincent, report. Huh? Uh, oh, um, right. This guy looks way too young. He's like a newbie. Like newbie, newbie, newbie. Even more newbie than Suo. Like sure, Suo may be new to this job, but he knows what he's doing to a large degree. This guy just doesn't seem confident at all. He's like, I don't even know how he got caught up in this job. Like, what? He, he doesn't even look like a killer, you know? He just looks like an innocent guy that, that's, that, that's 17 years old and is about to have his 18th birthday, which his mom and dad paid for, of course, and then accidentally walked into a room where he just, I don't know, walked into the wrong room where he ended up being embarrassed and he's like slowly starting to sweat a little bit as you can see on his cheek. What the hell? This guy doesn't fit here at all. Vincent wiped the drool from his mouth and stood up. Three thar targets, three kills, no civilian casualties, expense of three bullets. Not bad at all, I think. I may be new here, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that executing all of your targets without any unrelated casualties or expenses is ideal. Regardless, I must admit that I'm a little jealous. Even if I've only just started here, one job for the week is pitifully low. That guy did a good job though, Vincent or whatever. Despite the fact that he may not look like it, he did a good job, I guess. And I can just imagine the pay bump for tripling my quota. Kane, two targets, two kills, five civilian casualties, no expenses. Do the casualties need taken care of? No, sir. They never saw me coming. Good enough. Misa, was your assistance required? Misa? In response to Sai's query, nobody made a sound. Instead, my other co-workers all turned away, waiting for an answer. Oh, she's sleeping on my- oh, oh, I didn't even notice. Going by the stairs, and the fact that there were only two girls here, I guess this must be Misa. It's a nice name. And I certainly do prefer to have something to call her. Nonetheless, Psst, Misa, wake up. I gently shook Misa back and forth until her eyes finally opened. Huh? Shake, shake. She just goes right back to sleep. No sooner had she woken up to silently answer Sai's question than Misa dozed off once more. Fine, go back to sleep. I'm used to being a pillow. Yeah, I guess that's like our second uh, second job that we're doing actually more frequently than, than killing other people, you know, because we're both a pillow to Sarah and apparently Misa now as well. Heh, <laughs> I guess you were fine on your own after all. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hang on a second! You actually did it? Without any help? 
You don't have to act that surprised. Wait, what are these two talking about? How does Misa's answer correspond to my assignment? Did a damn good job of it too? Much better than you would have, Leon. Made it look like a car accident or something. Nobody even saw him. Nobody? Misa, was he with the victim until the moment of death? Once again, he's asking her instead of me. How would she even... Wait a second. Was Misa following me? Ah, oh, it was Misa indeed. I thought it was would be one of our co-workers or, at the very worst case scenario, Sarah. But I don't think Sarah would be that good at stalking or following people. So, it makes sense that it would be her, right? Logically speaking, it does make sense. They can't have a target survive just because the new guy failed after all. Even so, for Misa to be able to follow me all that way, and for that long, without me catching a glimpse of her, she really must have a place here. At least Sai looks as dangerous as he acts. I completely underestimated this girl. That's another thing, like a lot of these people here, like half of them actually look like, yeah, they're expected to be here. You'd think like, okay, they, they would definitely be in this kind of a kind of a job and others just really seem like they're out of place. Misa is probably one of them, Vincent also and then I think there was another girl who doesn't really look that like, much like a killer either but you gotta remember that they're here for a reason right there and they're longer than us here we're just uh, we're just very very new so that's gotta be for a reason like sure even though they might not look like a killer or dangerous they definitely definitely are. Nod. Misa nodded in response to Sai's question, still seemingly half asleep. Alright, good enough. Suo, report. Uh, me? Crap, how did the others go again? Um, uh, one target, one kill, no civilian casualties, expenses, train and the bus fare? <laughs> My colleagues all chuckled at me and rolled their eyes, one after another. And what did they mean at it with expenses? <laughs> Everybody else was like, I don't even know what they had to say. Um, three bullets. Yeah. All right. That I guess what they. So I guess that means uh, expenses. Like, what did you uh, lose as? valuables I guess to to get the job done so it could be like a knife could be um, three bullets could be what else could you use to kill people a grenade that could be a possibility you know but that would not really be a stealthy kill but I think things of that nature would be regarded as uh, expenditures fine that's it for now nobody has any outstanding targets or loose ends Sunday it is well, we did our job, but okay, no new job for us? With the meeting at last coming to an end, my colleagues rose to their feet and left the room, one after another. That is, except for Misa and I. If it were Sarah sleeping on my arm, I would have simply carried her home. Given that the girl on my shoulder was both a near stranger and a professional killer, however, I realized that would probably wouldn't go too well for me. Just as I pondered my situation, Sai removed Misa from my shoulder, supporting her sleeping figure so she wouldn't fall over. Suo, yes sir. Karasu wishes to speak with you. As do I. Uh oh. This has got to be a good thing, right? N no way are they like... Unless they... Okay, they might criticize us over the way that we got the job done. And that we didn't like confirm the kill ourselves with our own two hands, you know, because that could be a, a dangerous thing. But other than that, I have a feeling that this could only mean good, right? Who would, who the hell would they like? Oh, this guy actually killed the guy, which was what we exactly what we asked him to do, and it was a task that nobody could have completed before this. But we're still gonna let you go. You're fired, Suo. Like that doesn't make any sense. After a short trip and utter silence, Sai, and Sai, Misa and I made our way over to Karasu's office. Misa immediately made her way over to the wall and sat down, propping herself up 
and going back to sleep. Sai closed the door behind us, then walked over to my side as we faced Karasu. Welcome back, my children. All is well, I presume. His children? Karasu is starting to sound more like a priest than a crime lord. Sir, I've brought the boy. I can see that. Did you tell him why he's... Oh, right. Sorry, that was rude of me. Suo, my boy, do you know why you're here? No, sir. You don't even have an inkling? I'm sure there are dozens of reasons why Karasu might have called me here, and given his jovial tone, I'm guessing it's not for anything negative. As for what the reason might be, however, I have no idea. No, sir. In that case, let me show you. Karasu pressed a key on his laptop, causing the television screen behind him to light up. This is a research lab of Ad Adder Technologies, a medical science firm. They're one of the largest multinational companies in the country. Ever heard of them? I know all too well who they are. There aren't too many people in this country who don't. Adder are the ones responsible for curing asthma, heart disease, and even various types of cancer. What? What kind of world do they live in? The problem is, their cures come with a premium price tag, and the patients who can actually afford their services still tend to drop like flies. They became infamous sometime last year when they unveiled their new wonder drug. As they put it, a universal vaccine, the type to cure you of any sickness known to man. Needless to say, it was a huge bust. After making a fortune off suckers worldwide, they retracted the drug and announced that it was all part of some medical trial, successfully curing nothing but the drop in sales. I have, sir. I've heard all about them. Oh ho ho, is that so? I bet you haven't heard what's in the works at the labs in Middlebrook. That's a pretty safe bet considering I've never even heard of the place. N no, I haven't. Oh, in that case, feast your eyes on these. Karasu handed me a stack of blueprints, all marked confidential and bearing other watermarks. The text was unreadable, and the diagrams were nonsensical, but they were definitely corporate blueprints. Wait a minute. Is Karasu... Stealing their technology? Little Miss Misa managed to get their hands on a flash drive containing these documents during an assignment a few months back. It took a while for our techies to decrypt the contents, but now that they have, Karasu gestured that I should flip through the later blueprints. I did as he wanted, then stopped as I reached the documents with English text and decipherable diagrams. As you can see, Adders have been branching into other technologies, while they make money on the side by selling premium medical products. Their foray of their research is weaponry. On the page you're looking at, for example, is a personal fighter craft, a vehicle capable of flight that takes up less space than a modern sedan. It's marked as being a project for greener transportation, of course, Allowing Adder to re app research and development grants outside of military commissions. Not that anybody believes it. In the first quarter of next year, Adder plan on unveiling their newest wonder drug to the public. When they do, security will be heightened and the research facilities will become far more difficult to infiltrate. So before they do that, my children, you three are going to break into Adder Technologies. <sighs> Again. <sighs> In the face of Karasu's amazing proclamation, Sai and Misa both seem thoroughly underwhelmed. Uh, us three? You mean me? Who else would I mean? I told you when we first met, did I not? I told you that your job was not so simple. But I... I've never... It's the whole boxing fiasco all over again. This is definitely not what I signed up for. 
What's wrong? Not filling up for a job? Sai and little Mi Misa have broken into other facilities plenty of times. Sai and little Misa didn't start in this line of work less than a week ago. Not including the abandoned house near Sarah's school, the only place I've really broken into was the K household, and that was no walk in the park. I can only imagine how I'd how it go breaking into the office of a multi-billion dollar company. But that would be good, right? I mean, if it's a job that um, Sai and Misa have done multiple times already, then that means they can do it without me. But me coming along means that I can actually see them in, in action as well, right? So they can actually teach me stuff and, you know... Because it's clear that Karasu sees something in Suo. He definitely sees a lot of potential in Suo, and I feel like he's he's going to try to nurture that potential and try and create create like the perfect killing machine out of Suo or something. I don't know, but like the perfect man for a job for any job really. I feel like that's what he's trying to create out of Suo, because at the moment what we have is just a lot of raw potential, and it just needs to be shaped, molded, clayed into something deadly. You know, even more deadly than we are now. Sir, it's just, wouldn't the others be more suited to the job? I only just started here, and I've never done this kind of thing before. There's no way I... <laughs> the others... What? You mean Vincent? Violet? One of those novices? Let me tell you something. Outside of their small little worlds, the only members of your esteemed group are nothing. Violet, that little harlot, so proud of her ability to seduce men, yet she couldn't handle a simple target. Then you come along out of nowhere, first day on the job, and in one night, you render her week of effort moot. Or Kane, perhaps. The man can beat Navy Seals with his bare hands, but can he enter a scene without catching the attention of everyone there? I don't even remember the last time he completed a job without injuring innocent civilians in the process. Karasu continued listing his problems about each of my co-workers, trying to, trying to convince me that I was overestimating their abilities. Look, this isn't a job that requires experience or even the ability to defend yourself. This job requires stealth, tact, and adaptability things the majority of your esteemed colleagues lack. The only other thing one of your colleagues up to the job is Leon. Pity I can only trust him as far as I can throw him. There's no telling what kind of mischief that conceited fool would get up to on a job like this. Besides, I didn't just choose you because you're the shiniest of five thirds. I chose you for your adaptability. One day on the job, and you are better collected than Marcus. One day as a killer, and you outdo Violet. It's remarkable. You just shift from position to position like it's nothing, adapting to your situation and blending in. You're like a human chameleon. Dang, that's actually <laughs> that's a strange but also a really awesome compliment, right? Is that supposed to be a compliment? I've been called a lot of things in my life, but Comedian is a new one. And the only reason I adapt so readily is because I have no choice. Sai and his daughter are the only ones currently capable of pulling this off. Unfortunately, the security measures barring entry from Anner's most prized secrets makes this job a three-person minimum. Did he just say daughter? Is Misa Sai's daughter? That's interesting, like, you know, father and daughter, this is like their bonding experience, it's like their father and daughter outings just going out into breaking into multi-million uh, corporations, dang, that's pretty badass actually. That's why I want you, my little chameleon, to start learning from the best. Even if you aren't ready now, a few weeks with my greatest assets should give you all the training you need. Bam, I see, I was sort of right. Like, he sees a lot of potential and he just wants to train it, mold it. I don't know whether to feel flattered or afraid. Me? Break into other technologies? 
But I'm a killer, right? That's why you hired me. I did nothing of the sorts. Your first assignment was a test. The fact that you also completed a necessary service under my employment is just a bonus. Of course, that isn't to say you won't be killing anyone else. But your position is by no means limited to that kind of work. So what do you say? Interested in becoming Sai's newest protege? Breaking into Adder, learning from Sai. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't interested, but to already move on from assassinations to corporate espionage? Like, dude, this guy is flying through the ranks. Suo is insane. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Am I a high school student? A furniture mover? A collector? Head collector? Assassin? What is my goal? Do I want to make enough money to support my sister indefinitely? Am I just making ends meet until we receive our inheritance? My life has been in overdrive for a while now. I've done all kinds of things I've never thought possible. Am I really prepared to move into the world of corporate espionage? Oh my god. I, I, I just want to say that we are, okay? I mean, besides the fact that sure his job may be immoral on a lot of levels, it's actually pretty cool not only to get an insight into this sort of job, you know, but just in general, I, I really find this very intriguing. I, I don't want to say it's cool and awesome because then people will be like, what? Uh, and then I go missing for like an entire year and then come back. And I'll be like, hey guys, I managed to get a lot of money. Don't ask me where and how, but yep, I owe it all to this game. So we're just going to click yes here. Hell, what am I thinking? This could be the lucky break I've been waiting for. Karaso already said that Sai would be training me beforehand, and I wouldn't even have to kill anyone. This could be the single greatest opportunity in my lifetime. I wouldn't call it that, but it's definitely a great opportunity. Not the single greatest one though. Alright, I'll do it. Excellent. I knew you wouldn't let me down. And don't worry, you'll be rewarded soundly for your efforts. I was hoping that was the case. Uh, I don't mean to sound greedy, but how much are we talking about here? Hmm. How much? My boy. Money would be a rather poor reward for something this grandiose. Huh? He isn't going to try to screw me like my last boss, is he? No. For a job like this, this reward must be just as special. Am I getting my own island? Succeed. And I'll return your home to you. Oh my god, wow. My... home? You lost your home not long ago, correct? Your parents' house. I've done my research. I know all about your life, before and after your parents' demise. If I recall correctly, your parents' death were deemed suspicious and you've been locked out of your inheritance pending a thorough investigation. What you weren't told is how horribly slow and corrupt the justice system is in this country. I have already obtained your house, for safekeeping of course. Do this for me and I will sign the rights over to you. Well, that one better than expected. When Sai said the two of them wanted to speak to me, I wasn't sure what to think. But for our old home, the house Sarah and I grew up in, to be so close. Suo. Y yes sir. 11 pm sharp, Monday through Thursday. Meet me at Andre's gym. The gym? Okay. But why? For training. Weren't you listening? Ah, uh, right. Of course. But hitting the gym? Is that really a good way to prepare for that? Just be there. Yes. Of course, I'm not done talking, there's one other duty I'll have you perform. There's more? The decision for you to join Misa and I, in training and in work, was not Karasu's alone. 
He wants Misa and I to teach you, to show you how professionals do things, to give you the skills you need to pull off our advent raid and survive. But I don't care about any of that. I agreed to all of this for my daughter's sake, not yours. His daughter? Meaning Misa? She walked off on her own when we left Karasu's office, so I didn't think her destination was the same as Sai's. But if he's asking me to do something for his daughter's sake, I guess he must want me to... What? <laughs> oh god, this is so weird. The first thing that comes to mind is like protector, but I have a feeling that no way does Misa need protecting, right? Befriend her? That, that seems like such a strange request as well, and date her is even further than that, but... What kind of request could he want from us if it were to be one of these three? I don't actually don't think it's protect her. I mean, you know, he he's asking me to do something for his daughter's sake, so he's asking something for us to do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but it's weird, like protect. I don't think any of the people here necessarily need protection, right? They're here because they are so good at what they do. Like, sure, some are better than the others. Mainly me better than haha Vincent and haha Violet suck on that and you too Leon but you know they definitely don't need protection of all people they don't need protection so I think it's kind of safe to scratch that one off the list but then the other two are so weird like date her befriend her I'm just gonna go to safe route and just say befriend her or something uh, that must be it this can't be a terribly social or heartwarming career and I doubt Misa still goes to school. Our colleagues are all older than me, and I'm certain that I'm older than Misa, so age-wise, I'd be the most likely candidate. You want me to befriend your daughter? Don't get the wrong idea. Misa is perfectly capable of making friends. You should be honored that I'm offering you the opportunity to even see her outside of work. Yeah, yeah. Everybody thinks that about their special little butterfly, you know? That's how old dads are. Very protective of their daughters. She just... isn't in a position to do so right now. What I want from you is something that nobody else here can offer Misa. You're 17. Going by your date of birth. You're four months older than my daughter. You're by far the closest to her in terms of age. And even in circumstance, Circumstance? Torn away from your home, cut off from other people your age, thrown headfirst into the real world, left with little choice but to fight. Oh, I won't let that fact consume my daughter's life. Suo, all I want from you is your friendship. When you're not at work, I want you to spend your free time with my daughter. Wow, this is such a strange request, right? Doesn't the father normally be like, Hmm, I don't like boys being around my daughter. Get away from her. Like, they'd be really protective. But here is he's actually requesting a guy to spend his free time with his daughter. Like, what? I can sort of understand what he's trying to uh, do with this, though, right? Because they're both fairly young. Like, they, he just mentioned they're both around 17 or something. That is still a very young age, right? And what we are doing, the work that we are doing, it is definitely like real hard and just hard and f f stone cold factual things that we're doing, right? We're actually killing and murdering and all that shit. Like that, that can be really tough for some people to deal with. And I guess he just doesn't want to her daughter to lose, not necessarily part of her, her childhood or whatever, but just... She wants her to remain human, I think. That's what he wants. He wants her to remain human. And part of that is social interaction with other teenagers or other kids of her age, right? So I guess that is his way of trying to do that for her and preserve that fact for her. Because he's a he's a veteran in this business, right? So he knows how, um, how consuming this work can, do, can be. So he just doesn't want that to happen to his daughter, I'm guessing. So as strange of a request as it may seem, it's actually a fairly understandable one from a father to a daughter. Teach her about this city, about this foreign culture. Show her that there's more to life than the malice and the deceit that we deal with every day. 
Make her see firsthand that this world isn't completely rotten. But above all, prove to her that life is still worth living. Wow, okay. Damn. How the hell am I supposed to say no to that? His request made it seem like she's a person... Like she's in a really dark position right now or something? And we have to s save her out of that or something? What the frick? I was actually genuinely a bit scary. I thought at first he just like, okay, he just doesn't want her to be lonely, but he's like, okay, she's like on the brink of uh, isolation and doesn't want to deal with any people and doesn't believe in the goodness in life. You have to show that to her, Suho. Show her that there are still good things to life, even if we are doing the worst things imaginable as a human. There are still good things that we humans are capable of. Like, it's definitely true. Humans are capable of both the worst things imaginable and the best things in the world, and it's always just, you know... It's always a combination of both in general, but dang. Strange request, but I can definitely understand it to some regard. Sunday night, October 2nd. As usual, my weekend passed by in the blink of an eye, and for the first time in history, I was actually glad to see it pass. The same lack of drama that I craved, paired with my work being complete for the week, led to a peaceful, yet painfully boring weekend. Aside from the Friday night meeting, the only noteworthy event to pass by was my shopping trip with Sarah. Oh yeah, that was a, a kick to the nuts, right dude? Huh? Alright. I know Sarah can be a handful, and I've thought for a while now that she might be bipolar, but what I saw that day was unreal. Sarah's always hated violence. I'm the violent one, not her. And yet, when that boy from her school started to insult me, she completely lost it. Sarah kicked and screamed and did everything in her power to inflict damage upon him. Maybe? Maybe the sickness that we have is like hereditary, it's like inside the family? If I wasn't there to hold her back, there's no telling what might have happened. Of course, even forgetting about the shopping trip itself for a moment, there's still the reason behind our outing. I only took Sarah out in order to distract her, hoping I could calm her down by showing her that, no matter how I got it, the money was ours. And thankfully, in the end, I did manage to calm Sarah down. I allowed her to misunderstand what I meant, letting her believe that I was simply too ashamed of my job to tell her what it was. For the time being, no matter how short-lived, our relationship has turn, uh, returned to normal. What currently concerns me most of all isn't my personal life, however, or even my job. Rather, the biggest concern I have right now is my training with Sai. As excited as I am to see what he can teach me, if it's anything like my training with Leon, I doubt I'll even survive. I'm sure the others are good at what they do, but Sai... That man is scary. The others, a supposed group of killers, are deathly afraid of him. One word is all it takes for him to instill fear in his own colleagues. That's kind of, um, that's fairly interesting to me because based on first impressions what I got was that out of the two like people that were the closest henchmen of the, um, or trained assassins or hired killers of Karasu, I would have expected Kane to actually be above Sai. Like I, I think Sai was good, but I thought Sai was like a bit above him. Or I, I thought I mean Kane. That Kane was a bit above Sai, but shows you that looks can be deceiving, and Sai is actually the more scary one. And yet, when Sai spoke of his daughter so tenderly, I knew that he couldn't be all bad. He does what he needs to in order to survive and to provide for his family no matter how others view him for it. He's so strong, so capable and independent, and yet he still cares deeply for his family. He really is worthy of admiration. Granting myself a momentary reprieve for my th uh, from my thoughts, I arrived in the same meeting room I had visited earlier in the week. Once again, I was the first to arrive, having shown up early so as not to be late. 
And so, despite my desire to get to work and stay out of my own head, I found myself alone with my thoughts once more. Oh, it's so scary. <sighs> what a waste of time. Tell me about it. To drive over here to longer than a meeting. No, no. A quick meeting's a good meeting, I always say. Within 10 minutes of their arrival, my co-workers and I had all sat down, been assigned our work, and begun to depart. I received a single assignment once again, compared to the multiple targets given to most of the others, with Misa and Sai not receiving any. I guess those two just take whatever work is left over, huh? No need to be assigned any. I think that's not the case. I think the work that they do, they actually don't want the other killers or trained assassins to know. Like see, the, I, I really need a better way of um, referring to them other than just killers. Or is it, should we just call them killers? We can just call them co-workers as well, but it sounds less badass because you know, if you're doing something as badass as that, you deserve a kick-ass name. So I'm not actually sure what I want to call them though. Gotta think about that. Assassins and killers just sounds too plain. Like it could work, but I want want something, you know, I want a really catchy and good name, which I can't really think of at the moment, so I'll think of it at another another time, not to waste too much time right now. But if any of you guys think of any, please let me know in the comments. That would be appreciated. Well, whatever. The important thing is that I have my work for the week. Now it's time to go home. Not so fast. Or not? Here. Sai handed me a stack of blueprints, which I immediately recognized. Blueprints? Wait a minute. Aren't these... They're copies of the blueprints Karasu showed you, as well as the other floor plans, hidden entrances, and everything else you should know for our upcoming mission. Take them home. Study them. Memorize every security camera, every alarm, every exit. Wow, these are seriously detailed. I'm amazed Karasu was able to get his hands on these. It'll take a while for me to make sense of them, but this will definitely help. Unlike Misa and Sai, I've never broken into anywhere more luxurious than a vandalized apartment. I'll need every bit of help I can get if I'm going to pull this off. Whether my role is noteworthy or not, more importantly, Misa emerged from behind Sai's back, silently moving like the professional killer she is. Misa, have you given any thought to what we discussed? Shake shake? I see. We don't know what she shaked or how she shook it. Like she could have shook her head like in the, you know, up and down like yes, or left to right like no. What about you, Suo? M me What on earth is he talking about? If it's something Sai wants from me, then surely... Um, I need more information, it's about my assignment. It's about me dating his daughter. I thought he said friendship. He wants our friendship, but this is as close as it comes, I guess. Curious about where I'll be taking your daughter? Yes, actually. The two of you only have one assignment between you for the week. Have you given any thought as to how you'll spend the rest of your time together? So that's why she wasn't assigned any work, so she can hang out with Suo! This kind of feels like an arranged marriage almost, what the heck. Anyway, as far as plans go, uh, I've thought about it, I have none. Uh, let's just say, I mean, you know, we have to um, impress Sai as well, I feel. So we're actually going to say that we've taken his request seriously and we've actually given it some thoughts. Just leave it to me, sir. I have it all planned out. Oh? So you're the confident playboy type, huh? Uh-oh, didn't mean to come across that way. Huh? No, no, no. It's nothing like that. Uh, I just thought it would be a good idea to plan ahead, you know? Hmm. Alright. I'll leave it to you then. Be at Central Park at 10 a.m. and escort Misa back here when you're done for the day. Aside from that, it's up to you. Uh, come along, Misa. As her father began to walk off, 
Misa opened her mouth as if to finally have her say. The moment she did so, however, Sai ushered her along, robbing her of the opportunity. <sighs> so I'm supposed to juggle my new career as a killer, prepared to rob a multi-billion dollar company, and date a professional killer all at the same time? Why does it feel like I'm digging my own grave?